to be able to, to, be to, able to take that kind of pain and rage and, 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 um, and, um, and all those emotions, and all those emotions that, Eric that Eric kind of, kind of represents, represents from, from being black, being black and brown here. I was able to kind of put that, you know, into, you know, into a character and put it on screen. screen. So that's so something that's that I'd like to take like me and I kind of, I kind of, I didn't, I didn't, have, I didn't, I didn't have a process. I'm not like, I'm not like one of these, you know, met this or this or that. I just did, I just whatever, did whatever I felt I needed to do, I needed to do or whatever I, whatever felt, I felt was right in the moment, every step of the way. So there was no real plan. I didn't have a, I didn't have a, I didn't have an escape, I didn't have an escape, plan, escape either. plan either. So like so every, like every day was just going into this place and I just tried to stay in there as long as I could. And then when it was all over, I think, I think, I think just being in that kind of, kind of, uh, that mind, that mind state, that that, 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 real, that real unapologetic, you know, just just real, just like, real you know, like whatever, you know, whatever all the time, time, time kind of kept, kind of kept caught up, caught up with me, and, 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 and I got a little, little pressed, it was tough for me for a minute. You know, really, just, really just adjusting to being around the people that care about, getting that, getting that love that I shut out for a long time. Like I shut out, I shut out love. I didn't want love and affection. You know, I wanted, I wanted to be in this lonely place as long as long as I could in order to kind of capture the essence of what Ariel Steve was, was what Killmonger was. So when we wrapped the film. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm like in my mind. Okay, cool, cool, go back to regular life, regular life, regular life, regular life, be cool. But it was, it was a little tough for me. Tough for me at first, like kind of like just to lay him down and be done with it. Did it take you a while? It took me, it took me, you know. I mean, I don't really, I don't really know exactly what to get mad at him. But you know, I went to therapy, you know, I started talking to people, started unpacking a little bit, and I, and, and, you know, like, you know, it's so interesting. I find that so interesting because I think, because I think, body doesn't know the difference. I remember having this having this conversation with a famous actor once about Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. I was saying Anthony Hopkins. I feel because you know all the stuff you're taking in, you do so well, and he's. time yes. because your body doesn't know the difference when you get yourself into that state and so that's why i think it's interesting for people to hear that even though you're playing this character mm -hmm. sometimes the essence of that the energy of that still remains 1000 percent, still remains and like your mind is so powerful your mind will get your body past a threshold that it would have gave, given up on way before like you're like like there were moments where physically i probably shouldn't have continued but my mind was like, no, we're almost to the finish line. You got to get it past that. You got to get past that line. But as soon as I got past that line, my body said, okay, we can shut down now. Yeah. And then that would it, it would, it would shut down after that. So I think, I think honestly, therapy, just talking to somebody was something that really helped me out a lot. And as a man, I think, you know, we get a lot of slack for it of, you know, you know, you know, not, you know, you know, I don't even talk to nobody, you know what I'm saying? That whole, you know, what it is to be a yeah. man, being masculine, you know, you know, something like that, you know, that doesn't. I don't really subscribe to that because I feel, I feel like everybody needs to unpack and talk, you know, whether it's, you know, at a therapist or it's, you know, a, a close friend or a family yeah, member or somebody. Good. That's good. Acclaimed playwright, Akiva McClam, who's best known for his number one hit stage play, Cain and Abel, was born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. At a young age, he was faced with many obstacles. After losing both of his parents only one year apart from each other, his grandmother, Mary Clark, stepped in and raised him. She would hold him up into the pillar of, she would, I'm, I apologize, she would help mold him into a pillars, uh, into the pillar of strength, strength of friends affectionately called the Renaissance man. McClan refused to let any obstacles prevent him from achieving success. He went on to graduate from Bethune Cookman University, earning a BS degree in sociology. He took residential con consular position at Belusia Halfway House, where he worked to help change young men's lives. Three years passed before he enlisted in the United States Air Force. He supported campaign Enduring Freedom on Iraq Southern Watch. In 2008, after nine years of successful service, he honorably received a medical retirement due to several military-connected medical conditions. He went on to receive a master's degree in information systems from Strayer University. McClan continued to serve his country in information security with agencies such as the Department of Homeland Security, uh, Defense Security Services, FBI headquarters, House of Representatives and the Government Printing Office. Akiva McClam has, has a passion to write inspirational stage plays and make people laugh, think, and plant seeds to introduce them to Jesus Christ. He wrote his first Christmas production, My Christmas Story, in 2009. 
Since then, he has been on a steady role in the D.C. metropolitan area. Kane enabled in 2010, 2013, deep cover in 2015, answering his call today in 2016. I'll be home for Christmas, the year for the transformation in 2018, written for New Hope Church of God's Marriage Ministry. Deep cover, let your light shine in the dark, in dark places. Continuous productions from the stage play Deep Cover. <clears throat> Akiva McClam ended 2019 by partnering up with executive chef Kendall Selby, former private chef for the New Jersey mayor, to do a dinner theater during the Christmas holiday. I'll be home for Christmas, the season for transformation. His place have raised $10,000 for local churches. Akiva McClam has appeared on the following radio shows, WYCB Spirit 1340 AM, WBGR, online network, and live 97.5 Everything Urban. Akiva, welcome to HGTV. You know you're muted, right? <laughs> look, look, I'm trying to follow, I'm trying to follow orders, you know. <laughs> hey, good to have, um, good to see you and good to be back on the show. Thanks, thanks so much, man. So let's, let's get started. Um, you know, people don't know who you are, so, well, you're, obviously, you're popular. You got you've written so many acclaimed um, plays and so forth, right? But for those who don't know you, um, let's begin. Um, tell us about the neighborhood you grew up in. All right. So uh, first, I want to thank everybody for showing up tonight and supporting us tonight on this um, interview. And that's so thank you for your support and uh, having us back on, having my cast on. I see them coming on uh, individually. Everybody in the local DMV area and also out of Charlotte, I see Nicole Color Me Actress is on as well. We'll be talking to her later. Uh, but, um, man, this um, goes back to um, Broward County. I say that Broward County proudly because, um, you know, going back in from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, everybody know in the DMV, I talk about my home, um, Fort Lauderdale, a lot. And this, um, the county is represented as Broward County. Um, grew up in a neighborhood called Lauderdale Manors. Um, so predominantly black, predominantly black in our neighborhood. Um Basically, was raised by my grandmother and grandfather. Um, basically, the the home. If I look at my history of our family, our home was basically ran by three. Um, it was basically a, a matriarch, a woman that was uh, maids. You know, they worked in clean homes, and they provided for the family. Uh, my grandfather he was disabled, but he pitched in by supporting us, allowing us to uh, all the cousins and us a little bad kids instead of going to daycare. Uh, my grandfather watched us at home. You know, that saved a lot of money. You know, you know, don't be in parents today. You see, like, they care, boy, that's a good business to get into. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so um, other than that, we was raised on 1100 Northwest 14 Court. You know, every time I go back to Fort Lauderdale, I go by that place and look at it. And I just got a lot of memories there. And um, imagine our family was very well known. You know, I got a lot of uncles and aunts that. Did very well in a school called Dillard High School, known as the Panthers. Um, school like a it's like an eight A school. I never knew schools gets that high. You know, a lot of these wow. players when I mean, they uh you know when you talk about the old hurricane back in the day the U, a lot of these players yes. came yeah. out of Fort Lauderdale. You know, and we all wanted to be a part of the U. You know, they came out of the uh, Dillard Elite High School. You yeah. know, um, St. Thomas, things like that. So uh, my uncles and auntie, they went to that school and they did very well in athletic. My mom would also, um, she did attend there as, at one time. Well, she graduated, well, I'm not sure my, my mom graduated. I talked to her about, I talked to you guys about that. Uh, but she ran track. So I came up from an athletic family, you know. And, but me, instead of going to Diller, uh, my athletic skills went to a private school, um, Westminster Academy. So... Before they quote unquote start recruiting, they were recruiting. <laughs> if, you know, that something? <laughs> if you understand what I mean. <laughs> so went over yeah. there and Westminster Academy started as soon as they went over there, I started playing and they started winning, you know, and football. I was uh, known as football player and a baseball player as well. I got a four four year scholarship to play baseball in Indiana. Um wow. I wish I took that scholarship, but um who knows? I've been playing Major League Baseball because back in the day, they were. I was recruited, saying I was one of the fastest to run from home plate to the around the bases, compared me to Otis Nixon of the Atlanta Braves. 
he was the next person when I was in high school. I was a, that fast. So um, it just, I never really got a good time when I ran in the forty yard. But I think I people brag. I think I ran at least about a four four maybe um, four five in tennis shoes. So if I got down how these guys now half naked when they running, I probably ran them maybe four three. <laughs> <laughs> So, as you see, younger, I was really going for being, you know, I was going to try to be an athlete, man. You know, I was into my books. I graduated from Westminster with a 3.6 GPA. Um, then went from Bethune, from there to Bethune-Cookman College at the time. But they know now it's Bethune-Cookman University. Um, I got a scholarship with them as well. But when I got there, the, the coach got fired. So, when he got fired... He, uh, the new coach from Florida State University told me, hey, man, I'm sorry, but we got um, – I got my roster. The things you had with your old coach, that was not involved. As, sorry, I can't do nothing for you. Wow. He said, you're going to come out. Now, mind you, I never went through none of this. Every year uh, during my athletic career, I guess, and I would say, I never rolled the bench. I was always a starter, you know. So when I got there, that was my first – Think about it. I think about it now. It's 48. That was mm -hmm. my first rejection, right? And mm -hmm. I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know how to handle it. Now, when he told me I can try out, basically politically, he, he can't turn me away, but I can say I can try. Right. So what he did, he saw my skills and he said, hey, man, you can play, but I'm going to be honest with you, Akiva. He said, look, I have my roster. We don't have any more money in the budget to really stand anybody else. You know, I'm sorry we have no room. Man, I walked away from that uh, from that office, and I said, "Man, forget baseball, forget everything else. I'm not. I'm just gonna, just gonna focus on school." And I walked away. I ain't tell nobody. I ain't tell my uncles. And I just talked to my uncle this Christmas about it. I said, "Man, if I would have known just to pick up the phone and call you guys what I was going through, you right. guys probably would have groomed me and told me, hey, man, maybe you can go somewhere else and play.' You know, That's right? But I, but I just gave up." And I look at it, I said, man, it was ordained why I gave up because I wasn't supposed yes. to go that way. That's right. You have, you, you, yeah. This is where God wanted you, right here. It, exactly. So Hold I look show. around. <laughs> this, this, yeah, exactly. I look around the room and be interviewed by you, looking at my cast, people I'm working with. This is where God was directing me for. And I and I, and I tell people, and I tell the Phoenix a lot. She's my director slash producer and an actress in, um, in some of my projects coming up. I tell her I have that, I, and that's all. I take that same intensity when I, uh, when I train for, for football and baseball, and I bring it to writing. When I'm with my cast, I have that same intensity. Like I'm ready to score a touchdown while I'm dreaming about running my routes in the sleep. I think the same thing about what I'm doing with these plays and with this, uh, with this web series coming up. I have that same intensity. And then I'm like this here. If you can't have that same intensity, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to be around you because you're not serious. And me either. That's right. Um, I, I look at, and that's how I really got connected with you. When I saw you one time doing something in DC, I was amazed at your work. And I said, I want to know what that thank guy you. right there. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And I thank Lynn for bringing us together. Um, exactly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So tell me about your household. You know, what was it like growing up in that house? You know. People see you now, it's like, man, this guy's all religious. He's producing plays about religion and all this stuff. Right. But before all that, what was up in that household? That's what I want to know. So my grandma didn't play. My grandma didn't play at all. Um, <laughs> my grandfather didn't play either. So I'm going to tell you something. We were from an old school. We got whooped. And I was bad, and I got whooped a lot, you know? <laughs> so I got to the point where I got tired of getting whooped. So he had this uh, favorite belt. My grandfather had this favorite belt. It was a white belt. He used to use the whoop or so. I had this uh, famous idea. I said, if we don't get we don't get whooping anymore, if we just get rid of the belt. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I ended up hitting the belt, and I thought that was going to be it, right? Grandfather had something. Then, you know, hey, back in the day, we didn't realize we would get abused, y'all. Everybody on this day, probably knew what I mean. Because the next thing, when the next thing he got, he went and got cut up the water hose from about this long. The water and hose? The water hose. And I tell you what, Ooh. when I first got stung by that water hose, it's like you got hit, then it's times 10. And when you get it, you're like, oh. <laughs> so 
I wish I'd have kept the belt at the time. You know what yes. I'm saying? <laughs> but we realized the water hole was working, and we stopped. We corrected our behavior real quick because the water hole was really to play with. You know? But uh, we laugh about those things. Right there. Yeah, we laugh about oh, these yeah. things. But I, I love my grandfather to death. We know he's passed on, moved on. But uh, what he was doing, mm-hmm. hey, he was disciplined. You know? Hey, mm-hmm. yeah, do what he had to do. But growing up in the home, my grandma made sure this was her thing. While you live here, we, we had chores. We um, we made sure we took care of the house, the yard, things like that. And she was a very religious person. She said, look, everybody going to go to church now, you know, at this age. When you get to high school, there was her rule now. When you get to high school, you decide if you want to continue to go on to church. Right. So there was that. From elementary, we had no choice, y'all. You know that. Elementary, we go on to church. You know, you know. Right. Uh, we got to middle school. That when she started, when we started getting older, she said, "Okay, you can get until now going to church up to when you go to high school. You can decide on your own if you want to continue going to church." I like church so much to the point where everybody, I think, me, my brother, my brother went because he he saw me. But he, I think, he just came along with me. But um, and I joke about that. We joke about that. But everybody else said, "Now nah. after high school, everybody stop." Right. I kept going. Are you the oldest? Are you the oldest? Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, my brother and I, but the cousins, I was one of the, the youngest. Oh, I'm sorry. We had a lot of cousins. I was one of the oldest of the cousins, but I had a lot of uncles and aunties that pre- could have been my siblings because I stayed in the household with my grandmother who raised me. So my mother died when I was uh, 13 years old. You know, she had me when she was like 16 years old. And that's why I said she, I don't know if she finished school or not. Um, and at 17, she left the house. Uh, so basically I was raised by my grandmother. Then the year after that, she had my brother. And then from, from that time frame, my brother and my mother basically went from house to house, uh, trying to find some stability, some structure. I had structure in my grandmother's home. So when my, my mother died, when she was, uh, she was, uh, diagnosed with cancer, she came to come live with, uh, with us. She took my room. And I and I lived with uh, my brother and I. We we shared a room. So at that time, my brother and I we back in the same household now. So we didn't really live together for for many years. And then so we start living together, being raised by my grandmother, as we watch mm-hmm. our mother die of cancer. So in '86 she died, and I will never forget. She died on '86 Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Um, we talk about it today, and I can't believe it was Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, 80, um, 80, in the uh, year '86, and um. And I remember taking that, getting that call from the nurse saying, uh, Dr. Gene Clark just expired, you know. And uh, I ain't know, I just heard the word expired. I knew what the, I knew that. Right. Right. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? We just lost our mom. But before that, um, going into my room, she uh, she grabbed me by my hand, put it on my brother's hand, and said, um, you look after your brother, you know. Um, and then she said some things to him as well. But it was her way because she kind of, I, I believe my, my mother knew that I was on the right path and she knew my brother mm-hmm. because he didn't have a lot of structure. He's going to mm-hmm. need some support. And we still have that love and connections even today. And, you know, so that's why I went and, and uh, before I would get into it, I wrote my first, my, my first main production was Cain and Abel, basically uh, for the love of my brother and my grandmother, and, you know, and things like that. So I tell a story about mm-hmm. that living in the household of 1100 Northwest 14 court, you know, but we had a great, we had a great, uh, life lifestyle there. You know, we had our issues like I have a family, you know, um, I saw some, you know, some, you know, some arguments, you know, some domestic violence here and there, but it was a lot of, it was a lot of that, but, um, um, but we had a lot of structure, a lot of love and direction. And, you know, uh, my uncles didn't play, my aunties didn't play, you know, but once again, we had that respect for my grandmother and also my grandfather. Very, very important. And you had that love in the house. Can you, can you tell me just briefly, you know, your, you know, about your uh, education experience? I know you got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. Can you just talk a little bit about the challenges around that. Yeah. So um, after going to Westminster Academy, I went to Bethune Cookman University and I studied in sociology. Um, I think I had a, I just had a love for people and I wanted to help people and I wanted to study. Uh, human behavior, and I wanted to go into the social uh, social service uh, department type thing to help people out. Um, when I did that and graduated, I was a I was the uh, council. 
I think what I'm gonna say the sociology president at Bethune Cookman, you know, so I was pretty active and you know involved. I always had the spirit of knowing people and networking. I still use that today. Yes. Uh, that's one of the things. That was one of the ability that God have uh, created, uh, developing me and gave me the gift of of networking. That's how I met a lot of these people here on on the, um, on the panel today and networking. And that's how we met exactly. And so after graduating from um, from Bethune Cookman, you know, I got into a program called Volusia Halfway House. You know, um, it's a uh, halfway home for first time offense uh, adolescent. You know, I was a I was a counselor there, and so you know, you pretty much you get them all. You know, from yeah. you know from mild behavior to aggressive behavior. And we had to you know go to training for use of force, so we, it was very aggressive. Not only we counseled them, but we uh, physically had to restrain them. You know, and yeah. th think about the youth today. These guys sometimes are bigger than some of the adults. In prison, you know, you got that right. <laughs> and, um, and then their attitude is real, you know, real bad too as well. So, um, so you know, we had to go through a lot of training with that. I want to give kudos to my um, a shout out to a good friend of mine, Joseph Trillo, who helped me get that first job. I would never forget. Um, Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, out of Daytona Beach. Prior to that, um, and that story, you never knew that. I don't think a lot of people knew that. Uh, a brother got locked up in my senior year in college. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I got locked up, um, spent a night in jail in Daytona Beach. And the uh, thing is, uh, it was it was a crazy offense. Uh, one of those things that I called the officers about and and because their law at the time uh, doing the O.J. Simpson trial, they changed a lot of laws across the United States because of O.J., you know, yep. And uh, here I am trying to be the right per doing the right thing as a black man. I always, as, you know, I'm trying, you know, as, as black men, even now today, when we try to do the right thing, sometimes flip out on us. You know, so you. I call and they say, well, sir, you, you know, um, the, the Volusia County laws have changed. When you call the police officer, somebody got to go to jail. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what? So I decided I'm going to go. I take it. Right. I'm going to go to jail. Thinking that spend a night or get bailed out, and everything be slapping on wrist, right? Nah, mm -hmm. the prosecutor wanted to pick this up, and they saw a good case out of this here, right? <laughs> now, next thing you know, I'm in. I, before that, I'm in the. I'm in a cell with a bunch of everybody, and we're talking, and it's just like the movies. What you here for? What you here for? What you here for? I ain't gonna tell them I'm here for. I, I'm just like you know. But they were trying to. Um, they were trying to direct everybody what you should do in front of the judge. And I said, man, ain't this. Some and it's something, man, just like TV, you know? So it's funny, right? At that time, before I working for, before I working for uh, Blue Child, I was a little, I was a little bigger. I was like starting to work out. So I'm like, I'm thinking about the stir crazy back in the day. I'm like, okay, nobody gonna mess with me. <laughs> We're surprised. So, yeah, I think about it, so nobody gonna mess with me. So I'm walking down, I'm very observant. So I see some guys, they walking, got their shirt off, they rolled off, you know, and they want to show, okay, I got this here, you ain't gonna mess with me. So guess what I did? <laughs> I took it out too, like, yo, nobody gonna mess with me. So you know, so <laughs> long as my pen wasn't pulling down below the waist, I ain't trying to do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, I ain't trying to give that signal. But I want to let the guys know you ain't coming my way. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sitting there in the pot, whatever, watching on TV, and we're talking about uh, what you should say in front of the judge. So. um this is, you know, so they gave me some advice here and there. Finally, my cousin came and bailed me out. And, um, and then, and the food, man, you want that? Nah, man, you can have that. Just like them morning, you want your cornbread? You can have it, bro. You can have it. That ham was so thick. <laughs> and I was like, man, I don't know how them guys get that stuff. So at that point, in that store, I had a little, I literally looked in, I was in my little cell, and I looked, it was not a mirror, but it was like a little something. You can see yourself. And you, I saw myself in the, the orange jumpsuit. And I literally looked at myself and I said, this is the last time I will ever be locked up. You know? That's right. I literally, no, because my father spent his entire life in prison in Rayford, in Rayford, Florida, right? And I looked that up right now. And they say that's one of the hardest prisons you can uh, you can get, uh, you know, pretty much get go there, pretty much there. And, uh, wow. But you actually. Know, say again? I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, and then my brother on my father's side, he spent. A lot of years in prison as well so i literally said okay this is the last time i do not want to repeat the same behavior of my father or my brother 
at the time. Um, I didn't want to repeat that behavior. So I looked in the mirror and whatever that was, I looked at it and I said, look, this is the last time we locked up. And I made that decision. That's why I know brothers, you know, young men, adults, whatever, those men that get in trouble, they can control their behavior. It's all about discipline. And you, you can look and you decide to say, look, I'm not going back. And you gotta and you gotta change your lifestyle, you gotta but, change your environment. But you actually did go back, right? Uh oh, you actually did go back. How'd you I go back? Enjoy you actually went back and joined the United States Air Force. And not the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you worry worried about that. Talk, I did go back. Talk briefly, talk briefly about your experience in the military, and we can get into the subject about you know while we're here. Okay. Hey, do me real quick. I, I mean, I need to put a power cord real quick before I lose you guys. All right. No worries. No worries. No worries. Go right ahead. I'm going to switch to Lynn real quick. I know her. All right. And also, you got Randy in the you got Randy in the um, waiting room. Randy can't come in. It says the device is not connected. He said, uh, "This is Randy Prince. He's in the chat. It said the only host is at the Abbey Inn." Uh, okay. Oh, that one. Nope. 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 He's out. What happened to um? She dropped out. Our uh, brand is back. Yeah, but for the reason, um, his device is not coming in. Uh, that would need to connect, uh, connect microphone. They need microphone and and video to to come in the room. If they're doing it from their phone, it probably won't work. So, Lynn, how are you? Hey, Ernesto, how are you? I'm well. Fantastic. If I'm doing bad, I'm fantastic. If I'm doing good, I'm still fantastic. Fantastic. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Phoenix, and how are you doing, Phoenix? You're muted. So I had, I had yeah, I'm, I'm muted. I had to unmute. I had to, you know, squirrel and everything. I'm doing great, actually. It's a, it's Very good. well, and it's, it's, and it's a good day. <laughs> perfect. And I hope it stays that way. The rest of it will, at least what's what's left of it. Uh, Nick, Mr. Well, Nicole, we're gonna, Nicole, we're gonna speak it. Justin. That's right. That's right. So. Um, is it Nicole on the show, Color Me Actress? That's right, Nicole, Color Me Actress. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for asking, Nicole, and welcome aboard. Aubrion, you good? Yes. I'm going to get you guys in a minute. I, let me, I want to hear the story right now, at least briefly, so we can move on, um, Akiva. Just your experience in the military, you know, how did that, or if anything of that experience, prepare you for where you are now? Uh, military was great. I uh, wish I had an opportunity to do 20 years, but I got out um, abruptly uh, due medical um, reasons, um, but I retired medically. Yes. But um, military, was, I, 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 I got pretty much what I have now is the foundation of what I have now. Well, I would say that was a stepping stone for me. Uh, gave me an opportunity to have a top secret clearance. Um, gave me a lot of skills that I, I use today in, um, in cybersecurity. Uh, that will pay the the bills while I can play and dream what I'm doing right now with with the, with the writing. But um, I never saw myself retiring in that. I always saw myself doing what I'm doing, what I'm getting ready to do full time. Uh, and that's the desire I have. And um, but God's been good, so I use the skills level of what I'm doing now. Working tele teleworking from home for the last two years gave me an opportunity to start what I'm doing in the future. What we're gonna discuss yeah. about in a few seconds in a, a few minutes, but um. Communication skills, um, far as authentication management, uh, what I'm doing with uh, Raytheon and top secret clearance. So, military have been great. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for your service. I appreciate it. So, what have you been doing lately? Because you've been, you know, doing all these different plays, and I know you got something hot coming out. Uh, and, it, and I know you as hot because Linda's in it. So, I already know it's going to be like that, right? I already know. So, talk to me about what you're doing now. Okay, I, so I got some videos to share as well. Yeah, so if you um, so basically before you show the video, what I'm currently working on now is uh, it's called Life and Music, and um, idea came to me in 2020. Um, I was walking through a uh, pretty much I don't know what to call it, but a studio, and I looked at, it, I said, man, I said I can write a a web series this place, you know. Then all of a sudden, because and I noticed when I say yes to God about something. Mm -hmm. All the characters start popping up, you know, and so literally I started writing this thing back in 2020. Um, and then I realized I needed some help with this thing. And uh, not only help, but I always had the desire of working with other people because I got so many ideas in my mind. And I know, Nicole, you can contest this too as well. 
when you got so many plays, films, everything in your mind, you're going to need some help. And if you want to get this thing started working a little faster, you got to bring on some some very people that can uh, understand your vision and um, and work with along with you. So this me is my way of working along with my way of working with other talented people like Phoenix, um, Tony Hollins. Um, he's also one of the writers as well. And um, uh, Brittany Woods, uh, known as Braddy, known as one of the writers as well. I got a great writing team. And uh, so we getting ready to kick this thing off. It's called Life and Music. The back of the drop is what I got behind here. Once again, one of the advertisements, you know, we try to market. It's called Life and Music. We're going to ask all the followers before the end of the night to start following us because we getting ready to get this thing started. Right before the um, right before the holiday, we started the recording for the trailer. So we'll work on the trailer now, and we're going to get that well uh, edited. And so we're going to show that off soon, hopefully. And then uh, after that, we're going to start recording this year. So what you guys are about to see is a, it's a it's one of the uh, the time we were recording the trailer. Uh, yeah, so She's playing Joyce, and she's getting ready to uh, talk to some of the people that she's recruiting for her idea at her lounge, and it's called Life in Music. Right. Here it is. Each of you were chosen for a reason, so let me be the first to welcome you. You can consider this your new home. See, here we don't discriminate. We do everything from R&B, rap, hip-hop, gospel, just all the way to go-go. So they say that music is a universal language and it's good for the soul. So I'm hoping that what we do here will be good for the people. I want to thank y'all again for coming. So right, so right there. Um, so Lynn, that's your first time sitting there, right? She laughing. So a lot of this you haven't seen, even Phoenix, you know. So that's that Lynn. Lynn. Before I talk, Lynn, you got anything to say about that? <laughs> um, I have a problem seeing myself on screen. Uh, yeah. Really, you were great. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I didn't even recognize myself without the glasses. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's that's it. Uh, did you want me to say more about the character now or just wait? Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I, was, now I want, do want you to go more into Joyce. So basically with that, everybody is that uh, Lynn had this idea of playing. She's playing Joyce. And she has the idea. It just, this is uh, Life in Music. It's right during the COVID time where a lot of businesses start shutting down, you know, and um, Life in Music is basically is a, is a is a musical drama series where a young lady falls in love with a, um, she's a, she's a basically a, I would say a religious, spiritual young lady falls in love with a, uh, I would say a person that never probably with the church in his life. And people are thinking, how in the world did they get together? Well, they got together because at Lynn's Lounge, she got this idea, it's like, during the time frame of COVID, remember guys when we had those guys going live and those DJs was going live and we was like doing the COVID and we were shut in and we were like, man, I'm enjoying this entertainment. So Liz decided to use her lounge like that. She wasn't making any money, but she was like, you know what, this is for the people. But this and then so what she did, she invited anybody from gospel to R&B to rock and roll. All these genres of music came to her lounge to stream. Just to, one, they came there to use her places to uh, to, uh, to rehearse. But mm -hmm. during the interaction, there's a girl called Abby. I mean, uh, Gabby. She falls in love. Well, she finds a, this find this guy attractive, named Jack. Right? Mm -hmm. Jack is one of those uh, well-known local celebrities, artists. He knows he got it going on, and he's just a womanizer. But for some reason, she sees something in him that she wants to. So basically. You know, during the COVID thing, you know, God shut everything down. And during that time frame, we're supposed to be listening, right? Mm -hmm. But we had our own agenda. So Gabby, mm -hmm. at the same time, though, she's trying to rehearse. A lot of times, church people, not only church people, but everybody, we had an agenda. When God tells us to sit down and listen, we still had our agenda. But we still try to make mm -hmm. it ministry. But she's, she, she claimed that she was doing her ministry work, but she got attracted with this guy. And she goes on a roller coaster relationship with this guy. And I'm going to show how 
when you don't listen to God like the, like the Israelites had to go over round and round and round to the made to the promised land. She finally gets it right. But at the same time, we're going to see how their relationship in this web series is going to affect one another. So it's called Life in Music, Sincerely Gabby, because Gabby is going to keep a journal going on through the whole entire time of the web series, showing her development of what she's going through. Because she, she got that connection with God, and she's going to talk to God. She got, she's very honest with God like David was. But my thing is, was she listening? And a lot of times we think we're doing ministry work, mm -hmm. but we're not doing ministry work or we're not listening. Mm -hmm. Right? But so is, Ga is Gabby's Lynn's character or is it no. story? So go ahead, Lynn. Go ahead and talk about George. So um, as Akiva said, well, I don't know if he said this, but I, I am a co-owner um, for a lounge. And um, because artists needed or need a place to perform or a place to rehearse, um, during COVID, I opened my doors and allowed artists from various genres to come in and um, use my space for their rehearsals. And then uh, I started allowing them to perform there. Um, and to be, as Akiva was just telling the story, it actually brought to mind what I did last year um, at the beginning of the summer where I had driveway jams, where I just opened up my home to do live music. So this story it resonates with me personally. I'm doing exactly what I did at my home. No money made just because I felt the community needed it. We needed music. Um, so yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, there's a whole lot more to my character that remains to be seen and heard, but you got to follow us. You got to like the page and you got to keep up with us. It's going to get very, very <laughs> interesting um, because, like I said, I'm just the, the co-owner of this lounge. I didn't say anything about me singing, but people who know me know that that is my passion. So how am I dealing with that passion in this series? Nickname Miss Lynn Sings. Miss Lynn Sings. <laughs> nice, I nice. am Miss Lynn. Yeah. So tune in. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to start filming. Definitely beautiful. Thanks so much, Lynn. Yep. Kiva, who do you want to go to next, Akiva? Well, let's uh, She's patiently over there waiting. You know, I don't know um, what she got to do after this. So we don't want to hold it up too much. But Miss um, Miss Branch over there, I want to talk about her character. What we want to do, we want to bring in some of the young adults in this, into this web series uh, because they got a um, – my assistant director, she tells me a lot – they got a life of their own too that we got cannot ignore as an adults that they got their own world and then we got to bring them in to and teach them in doing this web series so she's going through miss brands her name is uh in the in the, in the, um, in the uh web series her name is chanel now chanel. chanel is a very well um brought up very well in a, a household however i kind of like wanted to bring my storyline uh, when I was in, in going in, in the manners, where I was recruited to go to a private school. So I, I flipped this side and I put that her, I put her in that situation. So what she's doing now, she lives in the black neighborhood, but she goes to a private school. So it's now she's juggling friendships on both sides. She got her predominantly white friends on the other side that she can get along with and do fine. But when she comes on the black side, they want to tease her and mess with her. And like, you know, you don't, you don't lost your, you don't lost your blackish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not being black anymore, you know? So she's working hard to try to fit in. Um, so she's going through a lot of prayer pressure. So if you could run that one video of her mother uh, asking her to come talk to her. Okay. That one is A005. Now, can you come here, please? And now, can you explain this? Mm -hmm. 
even think that I would do something like that, it's the most understanding. Why are you in my business anyway? Your business? Your business is my business until you're able to get out on your own. Chanel, I am too young to be somebody's grandmother. So please explain. So wow. with that, <laughs> so hey, uh, what do you think, Ms. Brand? It's your first time seeing that, right? Yes. <laughs> so um, I'm going to let her go and talk more about the character. But basically right there, the mother found a condom um, in the washer. And she said, do you really think I'm, I'm like that? And so she's going through a lot. And uh, we're not going to get mm -hmm. more into that character. But um, like I say, she's very well uh, brought up young lady. But she's going through a lot of peer pressure. Uh, friends in the neighborhood trying to get her to have sex, trying to get her to smoke weed and all that stuff. And she's like in that middle. And she'll know what to do. Yeah. And a lot of and one thing about this character that we as as uh, writers, there's a lot of kids commit suicide because they're not having this peer pressure, you know. Mm -hmm. So now she's dealing with that and some more stuff. So I'll let her talk about that too as well. All right, Aubrey, um, bring us up to speed. Yes. So as you guys have heard, my character's name is Chanel. She's a 17 year old in private school. And she has, she does have a lot of peer pressure. Um, you know, she still wants to get along with the friends in her neighborhood, but you know, when they put all this pressure on her and make her do things that she's not comfortable with, it gets a little messy. Um, she does enjoy like, you know, private school and being with her friends in private school, but she just wants to be able to balance both and she wants to prove herself that she's not, you know, whitewashed, as they say. So what do you find that inspiration to, to, to play this character? I mean, what are you pulling from her? Or, or is this some, from, I guess, personal experience you're pulling from? Or do you have to go, you know, read about this kind of person? Or, I mean, I guess, tell me about, you know, how you get into character. Um, for getting into character, I feel like I can review things like, you know, the movie, The Hate You Give. Love that um, movie. Yes, Star. So basically, she yeah. goes to a predominantly white school, even though she lives in, you know, a Black neighborhood. And, yes. you know, her best friend was Black. And, yeah, so I'm just trying to think of that movie and that book and try to put it my own spin on it. Yeah, but you know, make it seem, yeah. Perfect. Is she wonderful? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I, I'm not, I was about to say, I'm sure Aki was happy to have you on board. That's great. Is she wonderful? Yeah. All right, let's so, keep going. Who's next? Yeah. So um, I do want to uh, real quick. I'm looking at the time. I want to be uh, brief with uh, everybody. I want to make sure Nicole Cullen, me actress, getting her part in as well. I want to go to my assistant director. Uh, she's my age cool about everything. Uh, she's got a lot of experience with web series, so I brought her on. It's like I said, about football. You got to bring in that right team to win games. And, um, and sometimes, you know, um, she's like a Tampa Bay coach will go out there and hit a player across the helmet, you know. Uh, <laughs> sure will. But, she, <laughs> but she's good. I it. <laughs> yeah, she's my director, assistant director. She's my producer. And also she's an actress in this. She's Gabby. Now, Gabby is playing um, the oh, love uh, story okay. with uh, Zach. So, uh, Erica, you can briefly just um, tell me about your stuff with uh, Gabby. You can go to Randy, then on the call. So, um, as he, uh, Kiva just said, so I'll be playing Gabby um, in the web series. So, Gabby is going to go through, I'm uh, trying not to give all the good secrets and all the good juice juice. Um, right. but she's going to go through a lot of things. We, 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 we just want to give him a lick, just a, just a, just a slurp. Right. So, right. Um, but Gabby, basically, she and 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 that particular character. So she is was born a Christian girl and a, 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 P, a preacher's child, pre, uh, PK. Mm. And so she's gone mm -hmm. to church and done nothing but sing in the choir, dance ministry. That's all she's ever known. Well, since COVID has happened, you know, a lot of things have changed. She can't do a lot of the stuff that kind of she was into. That was her hobby. That that was kind of her right. thing. Well, as mm -hmm. as they move to other other different other different areas, now all of a sudden 
there's this whole other world that's opening up and she's meeting brand new people that actually can sing but also are doing other things that are kind of interesting to her as well so it kind of opens her up to this whole other world that you know she's never known so now she wants mm -hmm. to kind of take a pinky toe and put it in the water a little bit but at the same oh. time her dad her dad is around and you know as a pk you know you got a certain kind of box you're in so she's got to mm -hmm. figure out and navigate how to still be Gabby, but at the same time, not disappoint dad, but at the same time, live her own life, but at the same time, still be a singer. And at the same time, progress in what things she wants to do with her own life. And on top of that, deal with some secrets that has happened earlier on in her life that if you have to actually watch the series in order to understand that. But it's going to be a huge. Go ahead. It's going to so be a, a huge kind of like. Movie? It is a series. It is a Ooh. series. So we're going to be doing okay. this for a while. So right now we are just in season one. So we're going to be doing this for a while. So the the end game, the Super Bowl is not just to have this just on social media, YouTube. It's to get an actual network to pick this up. So that's the end game. So, and if you're not gonna do big, don't do it at all, right? So, right. Real, so real quick, well, uh, before you go, uh, Fina, I want to show the clip of um, of the guy you was talking about that you got to deal with, mm -hmm. Ernesto. If you can show that real quick, yeah, yep. of of yeah, Zach yeah. Mm -hmm. or Jack, Zach or Jack. Uh, His character's name stuff. is Jack. This one. <laughs> <laughs> so basically right now I don't know if you guys can hear the vibe but he's just like um a um he basically like, hey Bota, I'm gonna get that I'm gonna get that so Jack right now is sizing her up already but these are the people that she's that Randy talking say again was that Randy no that was uh um, no, that okay. yeah. yeah so uh that's that's what she gotta be dealing with so you're gonna show that love triangle between her and Jack and uh so real quickly um she mentioned her dad and uh, thank you so much, Phoenix, for describing it. You did a very good job of describing Gabby. And her dad is played by Randy. And uh, Randy is uh, pretty much a pastor. And um, he's a former artist. And he knows what his daughter's up to. And he doesn't like it. Because he knows that the, the devils and uh, the demons that could be, you know, all up in there could sway her away. So, Randy, if you can quickly talk about your struggle as not only dealing with your daughter, but you also have some marital issues real quickly and then we'll go to Nicole. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um I was a former uh entertainer, a former blues singer in nightclubs and everything. And then once uh Gabby was born, I gave up performing. And when I gave up performing, God called me into the ministry. Um me and Gabby's mom had some issues, you know. She put me in a silk sonic mood, you know, had me smoking out the window, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so um after our split, I wound up having to live with my daughter, you know. So that was a transition, and then watching her as talented as she was, watching her go into the same life that I left, it was a big problem for me. Mm. Yes, so I'm man. trying to convince her to figure out another way to do it. I think he's, I think he's frozen. So yeah. basically, uh, with that, uh, he's not going to make the same mistake. Yeah. I made. 
Hey, hey, Randy, you are uh, breaking up, Randy. I'm gonna uh, clean up for you, but he did a good job describing that. Really, because yes. one thing with him, he having some marital issues. I want to show that in his writing and with our writers, we want to show that there's some pastors, well, a lot of pastors. Let's be real, we go through some marital issues. Some uh, go get divorced, but some are working out. But we want to show, we want to show some real stuff in this here in the web series as well. How he's going to deal with this doing this web series? Love right? it, love you know? it. You know, so yes. this is the cast. This is a web series, Life in Music. Please follow us. Somebody put that in the in the chat. Uh, Life in Music, where to follow us and go there. But I want to talk about Nicole Color Me Actress. Uh, by my networking, going outside of the DMV, we're taking this to Charlotte, and she's going to be the casting director. But also, what she's going to do is briefly talk about what she's doing in Charlotte and go from there. Hey, Nicole. Please do share. Hey, hey Nicole. Welcome. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Thank you for having me. Yours truly, Nicole Color Me Actress from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I, here in Charlotte, am a writer, director, and actress by trade, but I also am an acting coach. So um, spending time with youth, as beautiful as Miss Brandt, um, I, I deal with adults as well. So my adult acting classes will start back in March. So I um, met with Akiva actually um, at the end of one of my classes, I believe. Um, and I just so happened to be around and met him and we talked and playwright is a passion of mine on both on every uh, side of it, acting um, as well as writing, um, directing and then teaching. So everything in the arts. Um, but I look forward to scouting out talent for this. Who knows, Color Me Anxious might even audition for this. I don't know. Y'all might got me, this is really good. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, y'all, y'all might even need somebody with a name like Ernesto Rodriguez for diversity. To, you know, for no, I, I don't know, you know. Well, well know. one thing about Fetus said, this is an ongoing thing, and we need, I'm going to say this, independent artists. The main thing is we have music in this, uh, this life in music. If you're an independent mm -hmm. artist, come out. You know, if you're a comedian, come out. You know, we want, mm -hmm. this, this is going to be a lot of entertainment in this here, too, as well. So, Nicole, yes. Let's be a part of it. We're bringing this down on um, the Charlotte as well. And we see we got Zach. Well, can you show that one picture of Nicole real quick, though, of, yep, yep. of her class? Yep. Let me pull it up. So was, was Zach the one that was um actually doing that? Yeah, he's a woman. Yeah, he's a woman that we're talking about. We showed a clip of you, uh, uh, Zach. Right. His name is Jack. Right, so right, right. Uh, I always get tongue with Zach Jack. I forget. <laughs> Which one is it? Yeah, so we are uh, gonna show Nicole's and what she's doing in Charlotte, and uh, that's the way to follow her and acting up beyond the stage, adult style. So she's doing a wonderful thing in Charlotte, North Kakilaki. <laughs> good deal, good deal. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate you sharing. And I love yeah. that name, Pulling Me Actress. So you hey, we're definitely be working, Nicole. Together, yeah, we're definitely working. Thank you. So, Ernesto, um, Zach came a little late. Well, he was trying to get on, but he just came on. Do we have time to talk about his character? Oh, yes, of course. Please, please. Zach, um, say hello there to your whole cast, man. What's up, crew? Everybody I haven't met. Peace. How y'all doing? <laughs> man. Peace, man. Welcome to HGTV. Thanks, Zach. Hey, Randy, you my brother? <laughs> <laughs> Why you, why you say hey. that? Why you say that? <laughs> hey, man, we, I mean, there's some similarities there, the big heads and the, and the smiles <laughs> and the big old, what, why, you know? <laughs> I should have put my hand on like Kiva. <laughs> <laughs> we got four big heads up in here, don't we? Right, 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 right. Hey, so, so Zach is our guy that, uh, like I said, we talked about he's, uh, he got a lot of, he got a dark side, y'all, in this character. And we're gonna pull this out as writers. We're gonna pull it out so we can keep that. We keep the uh, the, the people watching uh, uh, basically glued to the to the series. Um, we want just like we showed that video. And the purpose of showing that video, of Jordan, in the beginning, is that he got so into character that he had to go to therapy to get out of that character, right? So each person that's gonna play these roles in his life and music, we want you guys to be just like Jordan, Michael B. Jordan. Get so involved with your character to the point you don't see Lynn anymore. You don't see Phoenix anymore. Right. You don't see Zach anymore. You see that character. 
you know? And Zach, I really want people to hate you in his life in music in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So I want you to come yeah, out right. being that woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that hey, be that exactly. woman. Exactly. And Wait. look, exactly. And when, when this is over, if you're not going to therapy, you, you're not going to get a crap. I made right. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm going my therapist right. now. Newsflash, I'm already in there. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so we wanted to show that with Zach, um, uh, with that character playing Jack. Um, basically, he's a womanizer, but he's a, he loves music, you know. And I guess just focus on his womanizing, but he loves music, and he got to show that in in life in music as well. He got a, a love. Everybody loves his character, as far as his friends and all that stuff like that. He's a, he, you know, he's a jokester. You know, he's a jokester. And um, other than that, but we definitely want. And then. You know, when you got a good woman really that that really spending some time with you and trying to get with you, we're gonna show we're gonna see uh, Jack show some some sense of the side that he don't want to show, you know, mm -hmm. because he got some insecurities that he always hide. And a lot of those men, we got some insecurity, but we try to hide them. And Phoenix gonna uh Gabby gonna bring that out and it's gonna be able to help him out. So we're gonna show that transition. We're not get in detail, but you're gonna see a transformation on both sides of these two characters of Gabby and Zach and how they uh how they played you know amongst his, these characters so that's life and music guys and the rap there and I want to thank um all those people who already gave me the green light of using their their establishment you know um we got said um you know at the uh cut masters at the uh you know for the barbershop I'm um, sorry signature cuts signature cuts in the Waldorf Maryland uh, we opened up that episode one in that scene there. Uh, Jack, Jack, you'll be getting a haircut when you find out the news about COVID and all that stuff. You know, we uh, okay. ran, ran we're working with you and your church too as well. You know, we're talking about that. Um, shout out to, um, you know, um, was that Piers, uh, Pete as well as with the, um, I forget uh, the name, just that quick. Martinis. Thank you, Lynn. Martinis. Uh, Martinis. Martinis. Yeah. Martinis. They, yeah, thank you. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, Red Tails. We're talking to the uh, owner there uh, with Red Tails here in Wardoff. Go out and support these businesses. Uh, we've got other business yes. businesses that we're going to be uh, doing things to as well. But thank you for everybody who behind the scenes. Angela, uh, Shea Boss, who's doing a immaculate job for the uh, administrative work for Claiming Prize Production. She's doing, uh, doing a good job with that. Uh, my team uh, from the play side, Reggie Humphrey, and, uh, you know, all that, you know, so those guys were working hard and those who believe in us. But the thing is, you want to believe in us, support us by following us on Life and Music yeah. on Facebook and also yeah. Instagram. But um, and that's all, once again, man, thank you for giving us this opportunity to, to talk about Life and Music. Pleasure is all mine. I have one more question before I go. And I usually ask it to the, um, the main guest on the show, um, but I'm going to ask you, Akiva, um, but I'm also going to give an opportunity for each one of your cast members to answer as well. And then this is the juicy as uh, the young people. So this is the crispy question right here. All right. So obviously, you know, we all going to pass away at some point in life. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we're living right, we're going to leave, you know, our estate, insurance, money, house to our kids or the next generation. But if you were not able to leave any of that, no wealth, no money, legacy, uh, but you were able to leave three principles for succeeding in life, in career, or even as an entrepreneur, as a playwriter. What three principles would you leave to the next generation and why? But I don't want you to give me three, Akira. I want you to give me one, and I'm going to ask Phoenix for one, uh, Aubrey for one, Lynn and Nicole, and same with Randy and Zach. So I'll give you a second to think about it. You know, what principle will you leave for succeeding in life, career, or entrepreneurship, or whatever that you would that, that, that she can leave for the next generation. Okay, I, I got a little mind to joke to me. Follow your passion. Follow your passion. It can create, uh, it can open doors for other opportunities. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Akira. Phoenix? So, so I have a 1A and a, uh, a 1 and a 1A. Can I do that? Because they follow Please. each other. Okay. Please. So something that I've been saying for years and that I've told, I have four children, and I, I, something that I've told them all their life. Time is the one thing that you can spend that you can never get back, first of all. And um, when you actually pass away um, on your tombstone, there's a dash. There's a time that you're born and there's a time that you die. And that dash is 
everything that you do in between everything that encompasses you everything that's uh about the world and all the people that you meet and everything and what kind of impact that you have given to the world or leave to the world so that's yes. what i believe for everyone love it love it let's go to one of the mills randy Um, this is this is something my dad used to say to me, and I, and I, I said to my son, um, and I've said it to my grandson, and that is never let someone else tell you where you can go and how far you can go, because they can't. Mm. Never let them convince you you how far you can go because they can't see themselves going any oh. further than. That. So that, yeah, and that's what that I, I, I tell my you. son and my grandson all the time. Beautiful. Love it. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate you. Aubrey Okay. Um, one principle that I would say is that nobody can stop you but you. Love so, it. yeah. That was great. Thank you very much. How about you, Zach? Humility. Ooh, Humility. Humbleness. Yes. Thank you. Why will you pass that one on? Um, because you in hu humility, you're also learning what to do and what not to do. You learn both ends of the spectrum just by remaining humble because if you're too pro one side over the other, you're going to lean that way. But just like Jesus, he remained humble in everything he did. So he was able to see both sides of it. So if you remain humble, you're not too quick to put your input into it. You just remain humble, see what's happening from both ends, and then you move forward from there. Beautiful, beautiful. Nicole? Oh, yeah. I keep this with me everywhere. But it is broken oh. crayons, still color. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> um, I love it. That is wow. what I teach my kids by. Um, and, and what that means is, you gonna live as long as you live in, you gonna you gonna you're gonna go through some things. Right. And it's not there to keep you from illustrating. So keep designing, keep coloring, and keep moving. Nicole Color Me Actress, broken crayons, still color. Lynn? That's right. All right. So for me, each of us is uniquely designed by God. Stay true to who you are. Follow your dreams. What, whatever it is, it doesn't matter because, um, what is it? The people who matter don't care, and the people who care don't really matter. It don't matter. Just That's do right. you, boo. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and keep it moving. Thank you so much. So if you enjoyed tonight's episode, if you learned something new and would like to support this channel, please, please, please make sure you, you like the channel. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter, and make sure you give us a gram on the Instagram. Leave us a comment and share with your community. If you would like to become a sponsor, uh, all you got to do is send us an email at hetvchannel at gmail.com, hetvchannel at gmail.com. And I would like to recognize briefly as some of our sponsors, uh, Human Resources Achievement Program, uh, JAE Consultant, and Real Estate Improvement Group Network. Thank you all for your support. And until the next episode, seek Higher elevations. Thank you, Akiva, and your cast. I really enjoyed it. God bless each and every one of you all abundantly. May he bless you and keep you. And I will. I can't wait to see the episodes. I'm looking forward to it. All right. See y'all in the next episode. Bye -bye. Elevations TV. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, y'all. <laughs>